To really understand trauma, I have found that it's important to understand the impact of different primary brain parts on how we're functioning in our day-to-day -day life. And the evolution of how our brain has developed across the course of time gives a clear recognition to why certain brain parts have a little more control when it comes to survival. So to, on the side here, you'll see a trajectory of brain development. And then on the other side, we have what's commonly known as the triune brain. Now the triune brain is a dated experience. We don't really talk about it anymore in the scientific communities, but it does give a really clear link into how our brain has developed. See at the base, we have a little lizard and the lizard functions as basically how a lizard brain would function basic heartbeat, staying alive, primary types of functions. And then wrapped around the lizard brain is our mammalian brain. Those are emotional experiences. That is our ability to attach and create bonds. As you can see the little kitty cat here. So you can think about cats, dogs, horses. How do they interact in the world with their own kind as well as with humans? That's a good representation of what this inner layer of our brain is in charge of. And then on top of that is our monkey brain. That's where we're starting to get into our higher order processes. And wrapped around all of that is our lovely human thinking brain. And this is the part of the brain that we are taught actually guides our behaviors and our thoughts and helps define who we are. But as you may have noticed, as we're going through all these videos, there are other parts of our brain that actually have a lot more power and control than we may know. And of course, our little friend, Amy, the amygdala is one of those. So let's dig into the other side of the slide now. Now, one of the very first senses to come online is the experience of touch. And that comes on board within about the first eight weeks of development in utero. That's within the first trimester. So our body is developing sensory experiences of what the womb environment is like as we develop. That's really exciting and also highlights the critical new opportunity that touch plays in healing the brain. And if we go back across the course of time, touch has been a part of the experience of the world for all creatures in one way, shape or form. So touch has been around since the beginning of time. Now you'll see our little friend, Amy, the amygdala, you know, we talk a lot about her. Well, she's been around for almost 300 million years. She came on board about the same time that vertebrates came on board. So I'm pointing to my back here. If you've got a spine, you've got an amygdala. That is pretty much true across the board. And the amygdala, as we have discussed, plays a critical role in helping us stay alive and also experience all of our feeling states. And then much, much, much later, a lot slower to the game is our thinking brain. 70 to 300,000 years ago, this monkey and thinking brain experience started to evolve and play a role. And so when we're thinking about trauma, well, our little friend Amy plays a bigger role than our thinking brain. And a good way to think about it is she's just been around longer. And going back to the developmental piece, touch within the first trimester, our little friend Amy, the amygdala within the third trimester, and our thinking brain isn't even fully formed. And we do know it changes across the course of human life, but we don't consider it to be mature until we're in our late 20s and even early 30s, by according to some scientists. So Amy's on board really early, looking out for us. Touch is right there from the beginning. And then our thinking brain shows up. So you can start to see why touch plays a powerful new role in helping to heal the mind-body system. It's been around a long time. Evolution is good at hanging on to what works. And also why our amygdala is so powerful because she is formed and participating in our life story from the day we take our first breath.